Hi and welcome to 5.3 Kinetic Friction and Accelerating. In this lesson, students will be able to calculate the acceleration of a block as it is pulled across a surface with friction. So now we're going to talk about kinetic friction, but it's going to be unbalanced forces. If the applied force is greater than the frictional force, the object will accelerate in the direction of the applied force or speed up. So here it is, the applied force is equal to the frictional force, and then the forces are balanced. This is what we did yesterday. The net force, therefore, is zero, and your acceleration is zero. You're going to move with constant velocity if the applied force is equal to that kinetic friction. Well, the kinetic friction doesn't change. We said that yesterday. The kinetic friction is just the kinetic friction. It's going to stay the same magnitude, but you can push harder on the thing. And if you do push harder then the forces are going to be unbalanced. So that's a big applied force compared to that frictional force. And then Newton comes in and says, hey, that's an unbalanced force. There's going to be some acceleration. And now you can see it speeds up. It gets faster. It will accelerate in the direction of the applied force because that's the direction of the net force. And now we're ready to do, this is just, it's nothing really new. It's just kind of combining ideas together. And I have this question here that's a little bit scaffolded. So you could even pause this video right now and try this out on your own. It's very scaffolded. Um, so pause the video, try it out, and then I'll show you the answers on the next slide. All right, so it's a 50 kilogram steel block being a pulled across a copper surface by a force of 300 newtons. The block's initial speed is seven meters per second and it's pulled for 10 seconds. So we could draw ourselves a free body diagram. It's a horizontal surface and the weight, the force due to gravity, is being balanced out by the normal force because those are the only two forces in the vertical Y direction. You have an applied force which they tell you is 300 newtons. And there is some frictional force, but we don't know what that frictional force is yet, but we do know that it's, it's moving already. So it's moving, so is it static or kinetic friction? It's gonna be kinetic friction, okay? And then it's uh, copper and steel, so that'll tell us what the coefficient's gonna be for the kinetic. So let's write the given info down. So I guess I'll try to squeeze it in over here. The mass is 50 kilograms, all right? Uh, we said we could figure out the coefficient of kinetic friction between copper and steel by looking at the front of the reference table. And that is 0 0.36. And they tell you, you know, the initial velocity is seven meters per second, and you're doing this acceleration for 10 seconds, or at least you're pushing with an applied force for 10 seconds of 300 newtons. We technically don't know if you're accelerating yet because we don't know what this frictional force is. So uh, we're gonna get there, but part A says, what is the force due to gravity? So we're gonna do FG is equal to MG. And you get negative 490 newtons, so that's 490 newtons downward. Part B says, what is the normal force? Well, just by looking at our free body diagram, we could say it's 490, but I'll write the net force equation to prove why. So we're talking about in the y direction, all right, we have the weight and the normal force. Let's add them together. Now, the net force in the y direction, they don't say you accelerate up or through the table, so the net force is equal to zero these two forces are balancing each other out and the weight is downward. So now we'll make it negative plus a negative 490 and you get a normal force of 490 newtons. Now we're ready to do part C, which says find the frictional force. So there's our formula. And you plug in the coefficient of friction and your normal force. And the force of kinetic friction is equal to 176.4 newtons. So that's going to go over here in our diagram, 176.4 newtons. Okay. Then it says, what is the net force acting on the block? In the y direction, the net force is zero. 
But what about in the x direction? We have 176.4 and 300 newtons in the applied force. So yeah, the 300 newton force is winning and we're gonna accelerate to the right. So let's write our uh, net force equation. The net force in the x direction is equal to the applied force plus the frictional force. But we have to remember these are opposing. So even though it doesn't show it over here, we didn't pop out a negative number. Um, it is in the negative direction. So the net force in the x direction is equal to positive 300 newtons, because that's pointing to the right in our diagram. You could say plus negative 176.4, or just minus, because they're pointing in opposite directions. And then you get a net force of positive, so the net force is to the right, 123.6 newtons all right so when you add these two forces together you get 123.6 to the right now it says what is the acceleration of the block well now that we know what the net force is and we know what the mass is we could use newton's second law to calculate the acceleration and technically what we're doing without showing it is we're we're adding the net force in the y direction and the net force in the x direction together but since the net force in the y direction is just zero it doesn't affect the overall net force it's still going to be just 123.6 and you divide that by 50 and you get an acceleration of i'm going to leave the test the decimal super long 2.472 this is not sig figs but we're going to use this answer in the next problem so i like to keep the decimal long or at least in my calculator so that i could use the the full decimal uh, whenever possible uh, so f says what is the distance that the block travels in this interval and remember now we know the acceleration and they told us the distance, uh, sorry, they told us the initial velocity is seven meters per second. I had written it over on the left-hand side there. And they tell us the time interval is 10 seconds. So this was like stuff over here, uh, but I'm writing it over here so that we could do our kinematic equation. They're looking for the distance. All right, so which variable isn't there? We don't care about VF right now. So you go back to your kinematic equations you find the formula that does not include VF, and you write it down. So you would use this equation, and then you substitute in your values. And, you know, it says its initial speed is 7 meters per second, and I think that means to the right. So, yeah, the, the velocity is positive initially, and we have a positive acceleration, uh, and then we'll plug it in. Now, I wrote 2.5 here, but I'm going to use this long decimal when I do my calculator work. And you get a displacement of 193.6 meters. All right, great. So I love this question. So it does incorporate um, some of our kinematic equations. And then after the kinematic equations, we talked about uh, net force and a free body diagram. And then we talked about even, you know, mass versus weight. And then we talked about uh, friction. Oh, and actually we talked about uh, the net force, uh, the Newton's second law when we did the net force equations, right? So cool, a lot of different concepts here. So again, you could try practicing this one on your own. I believe it's a little bit differently. It says a horizontal force of eight newtons is used to pull a 20 newton wooden box moving towards the right along a horizontal wood surface as shown. Calculate the magnitude of the frictional force acting on the box, determine the net force acting on the box, determine the mass of the box, and calculate the magnitude of the acceleration of the box. Um, now it's important to note, they tell you it's a 20 Newton wooden blocks. Uh, so I'll pause the video, I guess, and, and think about what you think that might mean. All right, so uh, this, they didn't tell you the mass. They're telling you straight up, this is equal to FG. All right, so that is, that is the weight of the wooden block. It's a 20 Newton wooden box with a weight of 20 newtons okay anyway try this out and let's see what you do so
So the first step would be to draw a free body diagram. We have our block here, and they tell you Fg is equal to 20 newtons. And that actually tells us what our normal force is right off the bat, um, because it's only those two. There is an applied force, Fa, of 8 newtons. And they just tell you that it's wood on wood, but they don't tell you that it's... Um, a friction uh, moving at a constant velocity or what but you know you know it's moving so it's a kinetic friction wood on wood all right so it says calculate the frictional force well we said the coefficient of friction between wood on wood kinetic is 0 0.30 and yeah we could do part a now so ff equals mu fn and the force of friction kinetic is equal to 0 0.3 times 20. So the force of friction is equal to 6 newtons. All right. Now we could tell right away these forces are not balanced. So we're going to accelerate in the direction of the applied force, which is what we would expect because that's kind of the gist of this whole lesson. Then it says determine the net force on the box. So uh, we want to do the net force in the x direction is equal to the applied force plus the force of friction. We don't know what the net force is, but you probably could figure it out just by looking at your diagram. This is positive 8 newtons uh, to the right plus negative 6 newtons to the left. Uh, actually, we don't. Need, we already wrote our units down. So the net force is equal to two newtons. These two together, when you add them together, gives you two newtons to the right. All right. Um, it says determine the mass of the box. Ooh, how would you do that? Well, we know what the weight of the block, the box is, and we know we're on Earth. Don't forget to write your units down. Make sure you get points for units. And then for part C, we're just going to do Fg is equal to mg. Uh, we know the weight is now negative 20 newtons. The mass is what we're looking for. This is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. You should also always get a positive mass. And you get around 2 uh, kilograms, 2.04, uh, but we'll call it, we'll round it 2.0 kilograms, okay? Then it says, what is the acceleration? Well, now that we know the mass and the net force, we should be able to use Newton's second law to find the acceleration. So this acceleration is equal to the net force divided by the mass. Two divided, hey, look at that, two divided by two. Two newtons divided by two kilograms is equal to one newton per kilogram. Not what we're saying, one new, uh, meters per second squared because they're asking for the acceleration there. Sweet. All right. That's about it. Thanks for watching and have a great day.